8, RCN 82, Verizon 1964. Uh, as well, you'll be able to go to the City of Boston website to look at uh, the recording as well as uh, the City Council YouTube channel. I want to ask everyone to please silence your cell phones or other electronic devices. Um, I also want to inform everyone in attendance that we will be taking public testimony. Uh, and because there's so much interest in so many people, we will try to weave that in so you don't have to wait till the end. We'll have two panels. We have a panel here with the administration, and then we will have a, a community panel, and we will weave public testimony in uh, throughout the hearing. If you are interested in testifying, you can sign up here at the front uh, with Shane, who's waving his hands in the back there. Thank you. Um, if you do want to testify, you would just state your name, um, your, your neighborhood, your affiliation. Um, today's hearing is on docket 1288. The matter, again, was sponsored by my colleague, Councilor Frank Baker, and Council President Andrea Campbell, and Councilor Michelle Wu. It was referred to the Committee on Arts, Culture, and Special Events on September 11th of this year. Um, this docket, 1288, is an order for a hearing to discuss Little Saigon Cultural District, a designation right here in Fields Corner. Um, so at this time, I am going to offer an opportunity uh, for my colleagues to offer an opening statement, beginning with Councilor Frank Baker. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'd first like to thank the co-sponsors, Councilor Campbell, Councilor Wu, and also Councilor Janey for, for coming into the district tonight. Thank you for your time. Uh, Boston is the largest Vietnamese Boston has the largest population of Vietnamese Americans in Massachusetts. Of the 9,403 foreign-born... Council President Andrea Campbell, with whom I was uh, speaking earlier tonight, who sends her uh, best wishes to everybody, as well as Councillor Michelle Wu, the third co-sponsor. Thank you, of course, as well to the Chair, uh, Kim Janey, for her great leadership in this space. I'm also here to offer some uh, perspective as we went through something very, very similar in Jamaica Plain back in February of 2016. I met with a number of great local youth, uh, mainly comprising the Hyde Square Task Force. We had a hearing in the basement of a library on a cold winter night, so the uh, parallels are uncanny. And we began the process of designated bo designating Boston's Latin Quarter, essentially the um, uh, area between Hyde Square and Jackson Square in Jamaica Plain. Uh, we went through the process, we engaged with the city. Good evening, my name is Courtney Sharp and I'm the Director of Cultural Planning for the City of Boston. Hi everyone, my name is Cara Elliott Ortega and I'm the Chief of Arts and Culture for the City of Boston. Good evening everybody, my name is Lisa Simmons, I am the Program Manager at Mass Cultural Council. The length of that process really helps everyone understand what those boundaries are um, and what is really wanted and needed for that particular cultural district. I want to thank Lisa also for being here. Um, the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture is very supportive of this initiative, and I want to thank Nova in particular for their work in organizing the district. With I just wanted to say thank you for organizing this, uh, and I look forward to hearing from, uh, from all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to call a few people up, and we'll hear. Yeah. Uh, regarding the um, designation of Little Saigon Culture District at the Field Corner. My name is Ty Bell, and I am a council member for the city of Westminster, California. I'm also a police officer for the uh, Long Beach Police Department for over 24 years. My son is also a police officer in the uh, uh, Long Beach Police Department. Um, I was a Vietnamese refugee. Uh, I lived in the refugee camp in 1981 to 19. I came to shop and spend the money. Uh, it is a tourist destination because Westminster it considered the main cultural center of the Vietnamese American um, in America. Uh, it's where there's a lot of uh, Vietnamese language, TV station, mm -hmm. radio station, and newspaper located. For the past 40 years, the Vietnamese American refugee have enriched the social, cultural, and economic landscape of America. And we have achieved success in many professional fields including business, politics, law, science, education, uh, literature, journalism, sports, and entertainment. Uh, in California, we have the great Senator um, Janet Wynn. Uh, in Massachusetts, we have Senator Dean Tran and Assemblywoman uh, 
We call assembly women in California. Uh, <laughs> Tram win. <laughs> the, uh, the uh, I'm proud that um, Andy Lay was in my office for a little bit of that time, and now to see her uh, working with so many of you all to move this forward in an inclusive, positive, community-oriented way is really inspiring. I also just want to emphasize, finally, that cultural districts are such a boon for the city. They do much more, although there is no formal funding attached or, or it doesn't you know, technically change the name of the neighborhood or anything like that. Just the mere fact of recognizing how important a community and an area are in the state and the city's economy means that we will be drawing tourism, we will be, we will be creating connections between the organizations and the businesses and the groups in that district. And so we have seen that happen elsewhere across the city. And we particularly want to see it when it is recognizing the diversity and the strengths of our immigrant communities as well. So thank you so much, Madam Chair. Wonderful. Uh, so I want to, uh, being a first generation immigrant, um, to be represented. Thank you so much. It's Rep. cold outside. <laughs> thank you so much, Rep. Miranda. Now I'm going to go through our, our link. The bond amongst community groups and individual members. My school and I are also well aware that this initiative does not replace any prior designations or names, but rather places its highest respect for the community while pursuing this initiative. The Martial Art Academy has been established in Fields Corner since 2004 and has seen and received the mutual benefits for being in this proposed district. The proposed area for Little Saigon is where our organization has been encouraged to form, establish, supported to grow and strengthened to last in many ways. It encourages one's pursuit of cultural and historical preservation as the culture of the martial arts consists of 4,000 years of Vietnamese history. Um, in fact, our biggest event is this weekend to celebrate our history uh, with the community. Currently, I am the operations manager for Unitrans Worldwide Incorporate. Uh, beside that, I am also a local Vietnamese singer of the Vietnamese cultural performance. These performers allow older generations to reminisce about the happier experience that not found elsewhere. So again, I thank you for your time, your support, and I hope after the hearing today, not just for all your support, but everybody here for your support, to name it the Little Saigon District um, in the, the heart of the city of Dorchester or the city of Boston. And there's one thing I talk to my friends out there, some of my uh, fellow Americans. Um, they ask me a personal question. They will support me, but they ask, uh, how could it be? Um, explain to me how could you want to change to make the little Saigon name to replace the city of Dorchester? I would have such a hesitation. I say, no, that's not exactly what I will want to do. The city of Boston and the city of Dorchester has been hundreds and hundreds of years of history, and it will be remain with unchanged. We only want to ask for your support to make our little uh, Saigon as a very, um, like I said, is it more, not nothing make me happier or pleasure we have the peace of my country in this hot city of Boston and city of uh, the Bond in, I don't know, anybody would know St. Margaret. Councilor Baker would know. It's no longer there. And that was St. Mary uh, for the woman. So she was born there and then same with my sons and they all grow up in Dorchester. We never left town. And uh, they are educated, you know, through uh, BPS, and they are doing perfectly fine. Uh, at least they don't depend on our finances. <laughs> uh, so I just want to bring back to the issues here is that I, I totally supported and wholeheartedly supported the naming or the recognition of the Little Saigon uh, Culture District in Fields Corner. And that's the key. And as a de local developer, I'm totally committed to Fields Corner. All of our properties in Fields Corner, Dorchester, I have many opportunities somewhere else to invest the money, but that's not the case. And again, I never left town. So the latest 
commitment that, that I did really purchased a lot uh, between Park Street, Adams, and Lincoln. It used to be the old bowling place, the Lucky Strike. Now, the Lucky Strike is really the name for the candle pins. I don't know anybody bowling's anymore nowadays. Uh, but they opened in the 50s. It's all candle pins, which is small pins, not the big ball. It is a small ball. So they kind of like, you know, phase out the life transition. It turned out to be the most successful franchise for the area. They outbid the, the Kumon uh, centers there, outbid their counterpart in Milton and Quincy. Those are the three Kumon uh, franchise centers in the Dorchester area, uh, Boston area. And right now, all the local businesses, we are so happy the food traffic ice cream is invented from Taiwan. Taiwan. They bring the concept here. And that particular idea is that kids go in and they order whatever the, the, the testy of whatever that may be, and then they roll the ice cream and they serve it to you. Rather than, you know, traditionally whatever she was baptized from this church. It's the old church. Well, for those of you who know the histories of the church, this church burned down in 1984. So the Boston Diocese rebuilt immediately within a year. Back then it used to be where Foley is, and then they moved across the aid center. This is what I think of when I think about Dorchester. And being part of the Vietnamese Scout as a kid, that was the first time I was surrounded by so many others that shared my cultural background. And I learned so many Vietnamese phrases and history that I would not have known otherwise. And this opportunity had certainly influenced me as an adult when I entered college. And I joined a group <coughs> called the New England Intercollegiate Vietnamese Student Association, or IVSA for short. Uh, which I'm still part of and is currently a board of directors member. And being part of this group, it also led me to be chair of the Benton Boston Planning Committee, which is the largest Vietnamese New Year uh, event in Boston, as well as many other smaller community events in Dorchester, such as the Betram 2 event, also known as the August Moon Festival, that's held in Townsend Park. And, being, and this is the part of Dorchester that I want them to share as well. And I think these events and the businesses within this area truly makes our community unique. And this is the part of Dorchester that I'm proud of and want to continue to share with the others in the area, as well as outside the area. So with the little cultural, little Saigon Cultural District, I truly believe that it would make this community so much stronger and um, continue to grow. So thank you. Thank you so much. Which has allowed me to connect with other Vietnamese Americans. Little Saigon Cultural District would be beneficial to my scout troop since it can make people more aware of the programs available to the community. It can help young people in future generations to recognize their heritage and to be proud of where they come from. I strongly believe that Little Saigon Cultural District needs to be established. <laughs> Đến năm 2014, tôi may mắn được làm việc ở hội Cambrian. Kit Lab, tại đây còn có người Mỹ bản xứ và người Mỹ gốc Việt như tôi. Ở Việt Nam, tôi là một giáo viên cấp 1 với 32 năm trong nghề giảng dạy. Tôi đến đây để chia sẻ với các bạn một chút về văn hóa Việt Nam. Và theo kinh nghiệm của tôi, một người mới đến với cộng đồng Dorchester, nơi tôi đã yêu thích kể từ khi tôi mới đến nước Mỹ. Giống như hầu hết các gia đình người Việt sống ở đây, trong lúc bố mẹ đi làm để lo cuộc sống thì các cháu ở nhà với ông bà. Ngoài sự kết nối gần gũi, người già chúng tôi cảm thấy bớt cô đơn buồn tẻ. Còn các cháu thì được học tiếng Việt, được hiểu biết về cội nguồn qua các dân, câu chuyện dân gian, lịch sử đất nước và những nét đẹp của dân tộc Việt Nam qua những tranh ảnh trong các và trong các câu chuyện được kể. Do nhu cầu thiết yếu của chúng tôi Có như chương trình và nhiệm vụ trong cộng đồng Cho chúng tôi học hỏi giúp chúng tôi tìm việc và hỗ trợ chúng tôi Trong các vấn đề liên quan đến y tế sức khỏe Qua đó tôi cảm nhận được 
với dân số người Việt ở đợt xích tơ khoảng 12.000 người trong đó đoạn đường từ phía khối nờ đến xã Vinh Hiêu ta có thể nói rằng nơi đây là trung tâm của người Việt cứ, cứ nhìn vào một số phòng mạch nhà thuốc, nhà hàng, siêu thị cũng như các công viên đã thu hút người Việt qua các hoạt động như trung thu, các lễ kỷ niệm, tết âm lịch cũng có những lớp dạy võ cho người Việt yêu thích môn võ cổ truyền của dân tộc lớp văn lá Việt nữ và một cộng đồng Việt Nam ở Việt Nam ngoài ra còn có một số vị trụ khác được thành lập đã hơn năm 10 năm ở đây có thể giao giao lưu trao đổi học hỏi với các nền văn hóa của các sắc dân khác trong khu vực từ đó cùng xây dựng một đọc sister đoàn kết thịnh vượng và đa văn hóa rất cảm ơn các quý vị đã đến đây đã lắng nghe và chia sẻ cùng tôi xin chân thành cảm ơn các bạn And sir, if you could briefly highlight the main points, that would be helpful. Thank you. Briefly. Uh, so, the madam wanted to voice her very strong support for the designation of uh, Fields Corner Little Saigon as a cultural district. And the main reason for that was because, so she came here in 2011 and um, over the past few years, uh, over the past few years, she has seen her, her grandchildren gradually losing their ability to uh, speak Vietnamese as well as uh, gradually forget their roots and their culture. And because of that, she's very concerned that young people in the community will basically have, you know, they'll basically have the same fates. And so she really wants, really hopes that by becoming a cultural district, there will be a lot more culture activities, there will be a lot more focus on Vietnamese culture in order to ensure that the future generations of uh, young Vietnamese, especially those who were born here, will be able to remember their roots, will be able to speak Vietnamese, and will remain Vietnamese while being an American. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, George, is George here? And Tristan? Thank you. Um, it is an honor to speak for you all today. My name is George Huynh, and I'm the son of Vietnamese immigrants. I am a first-generation Asian American, and I'm a lifelong resident of Dorchester. I grew up on Pleasant Street and moved around the corner to 109 Park Street. I bounced around Dorchester, JFK to Ashmont, finally back to Geneva Ave, where I have lived for the past eight years. Um, I attended the Dorchester Youth Collaborative and Viet Aid growing up, um, and actually that's where I currently volunteer and deliver um, interpreted sermon every Sunday. And I graduated from Boston High School and later Yale College. And so tremendously, the girl really loved. She was learning over book line, graduate from Purdue University. We're really excited for her on board. We give her, I gave her an amazing offer, unfortunately, to turn it down. And her reason to turn it down is that she thought it was too dangerous for her to commute to Dorchester every day. I was disheartened. Um, this place where I felt I, where I thought it was completely safe and my second home was impacting my ability to recruit and retain top talent. But honestly, I did not blame her one bit. The only thing she knew about Dorchester was what she could find on Google. Do you know that if you put the term Dorchester and mass on Google, the top three, the top suggestions are the top suggestions are is Dorchester safe? What is the ground bay in Dorchester? And what are the bad areas in Dorchester? The first, the first impression people get about this. please. I was previously a Dorchester resident. Um, I am the co-founder of Hanley Hotel. Just come a little closer to the microphone, like that. There you go. Hi. Restart that alarm. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and restart. Uh, I am the co-founder of Hanley Cultural Foundation. Um, we are a um, non Kind of sneak in there a few words in Vietnamese. Um, and then they'll do an arts and crafts project um, that kind of highlights the unique um, heritage. Uh, so, of course, we support 
this initiative uh, because Little Saigon um, is not Saigon, right? So it's Little Saigon. And uh, we're not bringing Vietnam over here, right? Uh, this is just us. Um, and so it is something that Vietnamese Americans have been building for everyone to experience, you know, and explore and embrace, you know. Uh, so we believe in diversity. We believe in, um, you know, like when, when another, co when people of different cultural heritage uh, come and explore and find out more, it promotes tolerance. Oh, man. It's <laughs> okay. If you could just take the final yes, seconds to yes, wrap up, no, that would be I just want okay. to say this. It will promote tolerance. It will promote civility and a sense of wonder. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Adina, I think we're next. Hi, good evening. They reached out to help when his family was most in need. They accepted him when he had nothing. Well, not quite nothing. He was empty in positions, possessions, but copious in dreams. He held on to dreams that he would one day rebuild his life here, start a family here, and make this place his home. Indeed, he did rebuild his life here, and he works hard for his family, but he has yet to make a home. Similar to um, my friend Annie's statements when, she, when I read her testimony, Director for Workforce and Economic Development on the behalf of the Mayor's Youth Council. The Mayor's Youth Council has a main mission to, is to engage Boston youth regarding um, communal events and po political activity. The Council also assists Boston's youth regarding their future, as we've seen through our job fairs and many other culture events. On the behalf of the Council, I am pleased to read you this letter of support. Dear Boston City Councilors, dear our constituents, I think that this is a diverse neighborhood and it's taken away from our Cape Verde. With local civic groups, including Gum Dum, also known as the Vietnamese American Community of Boston, to develop community policing initiatives. Tram Tram, C11's community service officer in Vietnamese liaison introduced me to the leaders of Gum Dum. Back in 2016, we had dinner at a local restaurant. We discussed about Dorchester's history of diversity that night, and during our conversation, I came to understand that the Vietnamese community was underrepresented within the larger community of Dorchester. Just a few days prior to our meeting, I had walked door to door with Tram Tram, meeting local business owners in Fields Corner. For my camera sharing initiative, one of my community policing initiatives, and when I realized that the strong majority of the small business owners here in Dorchester's Fields Corner were Vietnamese owned. I offered to Gum Dum leadership three things the Boston police can do as community policing initiatives. Then I listened, and I was here, I was responsible to bring back Town Field. Tram and I discussed what can we do. We met with Gum Dum. They brought back the park. They have. Can I tell you thing? Now, so. It means Vietnam. I will never forget. I will come back to make my hometown glorious, to take away the sufferings, how bright the day of return will be.